Hi everyone, I hope you're all well. So we all had a giggle last week at Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's Green New Deal. We all had a laugh when that infamous FAQ went up on her website and then after being ruthlessly but justifiably ridiculed, we all laughed again when her team took it down and started trying to gaslight the general public by claiming that it was a draft that got uploaded accidentally and conflating it with a couple of satirical copies that were floating around etc etc. All of that was very funny. But what's not funny is the Green New Deal itself. Now, after reading the FAQ, I was fully prepared to dismiss it as simply aspirational with no real substance. However, after reading the final copy of the deal itself, I realized that I was wrong about it. In fact, not only was I wrong about the Green New Deal, I'm just generally wrong about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now don't panic, I haven't suddenly turned all progressive on you or morphed into some greeny social justice warrior after one read of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's bill. I am, instead, deeply and genuinely concerned that this woman is in such a position of power and influence, both in legislation and in public opinion. And all you Americans watching this video should be very, very worried about what's going on in the left wing of the Democratic Party. Up until now, my opinion of Ocasio-Cortez was that she was just like any other millennial who calls themselves a democratic socialist. That is, confusing the system they have in Scandinavia, which is very high taxes and endless public services, with actual socialism. The difference between, say, countries like Denmark and Sweden and socialist regimes is that in Denmark and Sweden, while they do have high taxes and a big welfare state, private individuals still own the means of production and they have a market-driven economy. Socialism, and indeed its less polite, more violent cousin communism, necessarily require the state to own the means of production, not private individuals. That is the key difference. So under a socialist regime, you're not allowed to own your own business or work individually. Everything is controlled by the state. And when you end up with even slightly corrupt people in power, which inevitably happens when you give people absolute power, that's going to create some big problems for your everyday, ordinary, powerless citizen. And we have seen that time and time again when socialism has been implemented every single instant of it over the entire course of human history. It is the greatest ideological failure ever concocted by the human race. So what does this have to do with AOC? Well, there are certain passages in her Green New Deal indicating that far from being a democratic socialist, she seems more than a little bit happy to have the state seize at least some of the means of production. She also seems happy to institute a nationwide indoctrination program to influence people to follow her state regime. And she also seems more than happy to physically force American citizens to give up their private property rights in order to execute her plan. Let's get to it then. The whole thing is dressed up very prettily in abstract, aspirational talking points, like stating the intention of the bill is to create millions of high-paying jobs and guaranteed healthcare for everyone and clean water and air, etc, etc. You know, everything you would expect from a hardcore progressive trying desperately to disguise a totally unfeasible and highly invasive plan. And as I read further, I discovered a few passages that were, while dripping with the usual leftist moral narrative, really quite troubling. First, there's this. The deal wants to promote justice and equality by stopping current, preventing future, and repairing historic oppression of indigenous peoples, communities of color, migrant communities, deindustrialized communities, depopulated rural communities, the poor, low-income workers, women, the elderly, the unhoused, people with disabilities, and youth, referred to in this resolution as frontline and vulnerable communities. Okay, that, needless to say, is identity politics on steroids. So already we can see that this bill goes beyond an environmental plan and right into the realms of ideology and intersectionality. However, there's more to this phrase than that. In fact, it's crucial. So stick around and remember the words frontline and vulnerable communities and I will explain it later on. But first, through this tiny little time frame of a 10-year mobilization, Ocasio-Cortez wants to 
upgrade all existing buildings in the United States and build new buildings to achieve maximum energy efficiency, water efficiency, safety, affordability, comfort and durability. Now think on that for just a moment. Without clarification to the contrary, all buildings includes all houses. So over a 10 year period, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is suggesting that the government, with or without the consent of private homeowners, force its way in and rebuild or renovate people's private residences whether they like it or not. AOC would be forcing private citizens to give up their autonomy over their own properties with no guarantee that they'll even be able to live in their own houses during the process. Renovations can be very invasive. Often people have to live in temporary accommodation while they're happening. What does AOC expect to do with all the people that would be displaced by this policy? Does she want to put them in camps or something? It is crazy and an appalling infringement on people's private property rights. Which reminds me, you know who else didn't care very much about people's private property rights? Secondly, these two clauses are of note. Providing resources, training and high quality education, including higher education, to all people of the United States with a focus on frontline and vulnerable communities so that all people of the United States may be full and equal participants in the Green New Deal mobilization and ensuring the use of democratic and participatory processes that are inclusive of and led by frontline and vulnerable communities and workers to plan, implement and administer the Green New Deal. So, embedded within AOC's social justice narrative is a calculated push for all citizens to receive a wholly state-approved education, with a view not to preparing them to be free-thinking autonomous citizens equipped to chase their dreams and fulfill their individual potential, but to steer them towards complying with and participating in her Green New Deal regime. Add to that the second excerpt, that is, using these frontline and vulnerable communities to implement the deal. Gee, I haven't seen such a comprehensive plan to institute state centralized education since. Then, of course, there's this little gem. AOC wants to ensure a commercial environment where every business person is free from unfair competition and domination by domestic or international monopolies. Now there, straight up, is her admission that she wants the government to interfere bigly in the free market. And of course, it's under the guise of helping smaller businesses who are being crushed by big corporations. However, anyone with even a basic knowledge of how these people think will tell you that it is simply about getting a needle into the free market in any way they can. It is all about gaining power for the state. But possibly the most insidious thing about this whole document is the repetition of the phrase frontline and vulnerable communities. If you read the whole bill, and I have included it in the video description in case you would like to, that little phrase pops up again and again. The document speaks of giving them equity and having them lead initiatives and providing them with education and redressing historical wrongs and rectifying injustice, etc, etc. As such, AOC is doing the usual and quite evil regressive leftist thing of using the bad experiences and insecurities of these communities to manipulate them into thinking they found a savior they can rally behind whilst uniting them against a common enemy, a nondescript oppressor who is most likely the straight white man. As such, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez has successfully reframed the Marxist class war between the proletariat and the bourgeoisie. If this or any bill like it got through, it would quite self-consciously be laying the groundwork for an old-fashioned Bolshevik revolution, except with AOC's groups of choice instead of Russian peasants. It would be a frontline and vulnerable revolution rather than a proletariat revolution. This is why my friends and I have started calling her Red Cortez. Green on the outside, red on the inside. But there's something that's been left out of the discussion of this Green New Deal. Let's say, hypothetically, that sometime in the future, this or a similar plan was implemented. What happens to the people who don't comply with it? 
After all, this kind of policy necessarily requires every single person in that society to be on board. But that's a big assumption to think that every single person is going to sit back, smile, and give the state the go-ahead. So what happens to the presumably tens of millions of people who simply refuse? Would there be legal penalties, fines, incarceration for refusing to let the state have its way with you? Well, there'd have to be, otherwise the whole grand plan simply would not work. But what if threats of fines or imprisonment didn't work on everyone? Remember, America has a little thing called the Second Amendment for situations exactly like the one Red Cortez is proposing. So in order to get past this, the government would simply have to have a bigger and more brutal plan to quash any dissent. Do not underestimate Red Cortez. She is far from the misguided millennial she originally presented herself as. She is a socialist in the literal sense of the word, and as such, she cares nothing for the rights of the individual. She sees people as simply cogs in a wheel rather than free-thinking, autonomous human beings, and she will attempt to achieve her goal by any means necessary. And look, while I'm not denying we should all probably do something about our emissions, this Green New Deal ain't it. It is straight up socialism. And even though it's dressed up as working for the common good and for prosperity, which all of these regimes are, it is still, just like every other socialist regime, doomed to fail, but not before it ruins the lives of millions of innocent people in the process. If you liked that video, please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave me a comment, and if you really, really liked it, then check out the video description for my subscribe star link and other ways you can support me.